a Stuart 7A model steam plant. This is part 16 and it's all about making the reversing lever locking mechanism. Or should I say the first part of the reversing lever locking mechanism. First of all I need to cut a piece of bar. A very small piece of bar that will be threaded at each end 5BA. And just in case you're wondering the piece of bar is 1 8 of an inch in diameter. A special clamp fitting on the reversing lever clamps to this bar and allows the reversing lever to be locked in any position. I'll be making the locking mechanism in the next episode. But first I need to thread both ends of this piece of bar for 5 16 of an inch at one end and about an eighth of an inch at the other end. This is the 5 16 of an inch part, although in the video I only show it going as far as a quarter of an inch. And why is that? Well, I forgot to press record for the last bit. Sometimes it's difficult making these videos and doing the job at the same time. I set up the camera's focus and it looks beautiful. Then I do the job and I look at the camera and I see that the little red light isn't on. And if this happens with a complex part, then I will make the part again, which takes extra time and drives me mad. Thankfully though, most of the time I do press the record button. To thread this 1 8 of an inch diameter bar, I'm using my special tailstock die holder. It's a very simple device and very useful. It converts standard cheap die holders into tailstock die holders with a very simple adapter. And so far it works very well. I do need to make another adapter though to support the larger die stocks. One end is now threaded. I turn the piece of bar around in the chuck, apply some tapping compound to the end and off we go again. On this end of the bar, the thread doesn't need to be very long. The nut on the end of this support bar is to stop the reversing lever's clamping mechanism from sliding off the bar when the position of the reversing lever is being adjusted. By using the tapping compound and the correct setting of the die, I get a very clean thread on both ends. And thanks to my cheap and cheerful adapter to take standard die stocks, the thread is also accurate. If you're a beginner to machining, this is a good thing to make from a point of view of learning how to turn on a lathe. I'm going to take a moment to mention this. This is a 7 inch steel rule from RDG Tools. At one time when you bought tooling from RDG, they used to give you one of these for free. I don't know if they still do that. The point is though they are really good and they are 7 inch rules, not 6 inch rules. And even though size is not supposed to matter, the extra inch is very useful. The 7 inch rule from RDG Tools. In this high definition, highly magnified image, the thread looks a bit rough, but it really isn't, and it fits the nut perfectly. A special shaped part is required, which holds this one inch piece of bar to the steam chest. And to make it, I'm using a piece of steel, which is five sixteenths by quarter of an inch. I would like to video the part on the drawing to show you what I'm doing, but the copyright laws in England are very different to the USA, and there's no such thing as fair use. Copyright is copyright. You'll see what it looks like shortly. The first thing to do is to clamp it in the machine vise on the milling machine. I'm using a half inch end mill, also bought from RDG Tools, and please note I'm not on their payroll. These are just honest observations of good products. And in no time at all, this half inch end mill cuts a nice slot in the piece of steel. It's a good idea when machining to brush away the swarf frequently, and I'm doing this with a paintbrush. That's part one over with, now it's part two. I've turned the piece of bar on its side and I need to just machine away some of this. It's not essential to do this, but it's shown on the drawing and it makes the part look better. I'm just reducing the width of the 5 16 part of the bar. And it's this part that will be bolted to the steam chest, so it's very visible and needs to look quite good. And as the rest of this Stuart 7A steam engine is very well machined, I don't want to let the side down. Even though this is a very small part when it's finished and you look at it and you think, well, you don't even notice it's there, but it takes quite a bit of time to manufacture it. You will notice that even though this is a very small part, I'm leaving it attached to the main piece of bar for as long as possible. Now this part has to be drilled in two places and the end shaped like this. So it's over to the drilling machine. I'm using a centre drill as always to start the hole off in the middle followed by using a tapping size drill for 5BA, which is 2.7 millimeters. But I haven't got one of those, so I'm using a 2.6 millimeter diameter drill, which is fine. As always, I started the tapping process while the part was still in the machine vise. Then I removed it and completed the rest by hand, because after all, this is quite a small tap, and if I did it in the milling machine, 
I wouldn't be able to feel when it was binding, until it broke off in the work, and I really don't want that to happen. Now comes the interesting part. I'm shaping the end of this piece of bar on my one-inch belt sander. Very slowly, very carefully, very methodically. And because the component is still attached to the end of the long piece of bar, which acts as a heat sink, it's not getting too hot, although periodically I do dip the part in my water pot. This is the difficult part. If you foul up here, it's going to look horrible. This job is not exactly difficult, but you have to be very careful that you get it to be the right shape. After grinding the part to shape, it's time to clean it up on the polishing spindle. And once again, this explains why I've left the part attached to the full length piece of bar. Because the long piece of bar, as I've just mentioned, acts as a heat sink so the part doesn't get too hot, and also it's easier to hold in your hands. And in no time at all, it looks like this. Now I need to drill another hole, and I'm marking this with my felt tip pen, and it's supposed to be 5 16 away from the original hole, and at right angles to it. And once again, a repeat process, centre drill followed by twist drill. The hole is 1 8 of an inch diameter, and now I'm on the bandsaw, cutting the final part from the main piece of bar. The final job was just around the end where I cut it off the bar, and here is the more or less finished component. The two slight marks on the body of the fitting happened when the one inch belt snapped on the belt sander, so I couldn't continue, but thankfully a very nice man from Amazon delivered me some more this morning. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.